Hello, welcome back to MF Woodshop. Today I'm going to uh, remake this display case. Now I've already tore apart the display case a little bit to get the glass out. Now on the back side of the display case is this piece. Now this piece here uh, is something I have to deal with. Um, there's holes in it and it needs to be really smooth. On the uh, plywood side right here, there's going to be a mural of, uh, of the picture that they want on this. And I'll explain what this is all for here in a second. Now, what this display case is for, is for a local bank here in Anderson, Indiana, uh, Star Financial. On the, on the, one of the board members of Star Financial is Carl Erskine. If you don't know who Carl Erskine is, he was a baseball player back in the 50s. Uh, he, he pitched for Brooklyn Dodgers, and he's pretty much a local uh, legend and hero around the town. And this display case is going to hold some of his baseball memorabilia. On the inside of the display case, there will be several baseball bats, some baseballs, some of the stuff uh, that he's collected and kept over the years. On the front side of it, it has a trim piece and it's just some sort of molding, but obviously they don't make this molding anymore. Uh, so I found a piece at my local uh, home center that is uh, fairly close and I think this will suffice as well. Uh, these are very difficult to sand um, because of the profile. So not a whole lot of woodworking in this video, but I will show you a few tricks of what I'm going to do to uh, plug these holes. So definitely want to stay tuned and uh, see how this project ends up. I don't know how long this is going to take to get the video. Uh, so today is uh, July 16th and we'll see how long it actually takes to get this video 100% wrapped up and displayed. So stay with me and uh, check out this whole process. To put a small round over right here on this edge and that will do a couple things for me. It'll take care of all the splintering that's already there. Also, when I'm sanding or filling anything, it won't create new splinters as I'm running the sandpaper. So in order to do that round over, uh, there's some staples that's, that was holding the felt down. And I tried a couple things trying to get those staples out, you know, a pair of pliers to pinch it and try to pull it. And I did get a few of them. But this is about the best thing I've found. Um, all it is is a old screwdriver that I grounded to a point. And um, I just jam it in there. And comes right out. So I got the backer board pretty much done, ready to go to sand. Uh, I increased the existing holes to 3 8 and then I inserted a dowel rod to fill those holes uh, with a 3 8 dowel rod, obviously. Uh, I filled all the cracks and uh, holes and everything else with putty, and all I have to do now is just sand it smooth. So this is the main frame to the case. 
and when I pulled the trim off, they glued the trim to the case, which is understandable, but it was really good glue. <laughs> so I got some fibers and uh, some other glue residents on the front of this uh, case. So I think what I'm going to do instead of sanding it, uh, run it through the table saw here and just take you know a half a saw blade off and clean up that edge. The back side of this case is nice and true so I can use that as a reference. I just have to carefully run this through the saw, flip it around on all four sides and clean that front face up. The quality of this cabinet and the, one of the reasons I don't want to rebuild it, um, even though this is miter joints, that miter joint's been reinforced with the spline, and even the face frame was reinforced with a metal spline, which you don't see too often anymore. Um, maybe in a professional cabinet shop you'll see this, uh, but definitely not in a garage setting like I am just show you the quality of workmanship that this case was built back in the day. I don't know when or who built this, but they did a really nice job on this case. And after cutting it, I confirmed that it was walnut, and it is going to break my heart to paint this. So I made this little uh, cantilever thing on my outdoor workbench. That way I can set the frame up here and it's not touching the ground. It'll take me, you know, maybe five minutes to hit this with the belt sander. Uh, I got 80 grit paper on the belt sander and then uh, I'll finish it up with some 120 and then some 220 to smooth it all out. So it won't take long doing it this way and uh, it'll make it uh, real fast. Brooklyn's faithful fans roar and salute and hope as the Dodgers take the field. Paul Perillo, who had hit a homer for the Dodgers' final run in the 1953 series against the Yankees, does it again, knocking the ball into the right field seats to open the second inning. After Hodges bounces out, Jackie Robinson slams a triple to left center. Duke Snyder, who hit four homers in the 1952 World Series, opens the Brooklyn third with a tremendous blow into the third tier in right field, and the Dodgers go ahead three to two. Pinch batter Frank Keller at bat. Robinson dashes to the plate. It's close, and umpire Summers calls him safe on the daring maneuver. But Yogi Berra doesn't think so. And the fans will never forget the sight of Jackie Robinson preparing for the plate on his daring steal. Snyder drives him home with a single to right. The National League champions lead one to nothing. Gilliam's base hit to left with two out in Brooklyn's fifth scores Robinson, and the Dodgers trail four to two. And with two out, Campanella blasts a home run, his first hit of the series. And Brooklyn leads two to nothing. The Yankee pitcher appears upset and walks Gilliam to force Robinson home and snap the tie. Out. Jackie Robinson smashes a double to left field and races on to third when he decoys Howard into making a throw behind to second base. Amra singles and Robinson trots across the plate. Five. The 
Rizzuto also pops up feebly to give Hodges and Brooklyn's first victory is secure as Padres slams the door on any dramatic Yankee rally. With one out, Gilliam sends Amherst in motion with a hit and run signal and comes through perfectly with a double down the left field line. The fleet footed Amherst scores all the way from first. The score is now Yankees two, Dodgers one. Duke Snyder slams another home run over the scoreboard in right center in the fifth inning to give Brooklyn a four to one lead. It's his fourth circuit smash of the 1955 series and his ninth in World Series competition. Robinson drives a ground single into center field and Perillo scores to lengthen Brooklyn's lead five to three. Kendall calls on Andy Carey to try. Snyder with two home runs today increased his National League record to nine for World Series homer. Andres is out of a jam and still no score in the game. One out in Brooklyn's fourth. Campanella doubles to the left field corner for his team's first hit. Campanella comes home when Hodges singles to left and the Dodgers are out in front one to nothing. Gill hits a sacrifice fly to Bob serve scoring Reese and the Dodgers have a two to nothing lead. There goes the drive down the left field line. And Sandy Amaris races for the ball, sticks out his glove just in time, and makes the catch. And McDougal has rounded second base. He throws to Reese. And Reese's take to Hodges doubles McDougal at first. Let's have another look at that spectacular play. World Series record. And Padres. Elston Howard sends a grounder to Pee Wee Reese. And these Dodgers at last are world champions. Delirious with joy, teammates and fans mob the Brooklyn pitcher in wild acclaim. In the Dodger clubhouse is the pandemonium only a great victory can generate. And setting the zany pace are Gil Hodges, Duke Snyder, and Don Newcomb. This is Brooklyn's greatest baseball day. Newspapers shriek the tidings. So the project's finally finished. A pretty simple process of stripping the varnish with the sandpaper and a little bit of elbow grease, um, then priming and painting this project. The qu real cool part about this project is having everything come together and seen in the final outcome, hence the site location. So right now I'm at Star Financial Bank here in Anderson, Indiana, and this is where the project's going to uh, be displayed. So if you're in town for whatever reason, swing by Star Financial Uptown Branch and take a look and take some pictures if you want. Uh, really that's all I got for you today. I'll get you some close-ups of the bats and uh, I'd like to thank Carl Erskine and Star Financial for letting me do this project for them. I had a good time doing this and uh, that's all I got for you. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and as always I'll see you next time. <music>